NASA, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, presents Aeronautics and Space Report. This Saturn rocket, with the mission designation of Apollo 4, will soon hurl a crewless spacecraft into orbit. What you see here is this country's largest space vehicle, Saturn V, similar to the one which will someday carry three astronauts toward the moon. The story is one of Apollo Saturn, how it was conceived, how it has evolved, and the significance of this important first flight. To understand the evolution of Saturn V, it is necessary to understand the background leading up to its development. For one thing, it is the latest in a series of Saturn vehicles, nearly three times as big and five times more powerful than its predecessors. The director of NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center in Alabama has been closely associated with this development. Dr. Werner von Braun explained how he and his colleagues at Huntsville began preparing the way for the big rocket. Our first assignment along those lines resulted in the development of the first stage of the Saturn I. Uh, this was essentially an attempt of clustering eight engines of the type that we had been using in the Jupiter uh, Intermediate Range Ballistic Missile to produce a total thrust of one and a half million pounds. This booster in the meantime has not only supported 10 uh, successive and successful launches of the Saturn I rocket, some of them with second stages, but still serves us as uh, the first stage of the upweighted Saturn I, which will be used uh, to uh, first expose our Apollo astronauts to uh, orbital flight around the Earth in the Apollo spacecraft. Uh, so the total then uh, that we can uh, look back on and big rockets and real big rockets of the Saturn family are 13 successful launches, 10 Saturn ones and three upgraded Saturn ones. Uh, to put uh, people uh, on the moon uh, and with enough fuel uh, to enable them to return safely home to Earth requires a still larger and more powerful rocket, however. And this is what we call the Saturn V. The Saturn V will have a thrust of seven and a half million pounds in the first stage, and the takeoff weight of this uh, monstrous rocket will be about six million pounds, or 3,000 tons, which is about the weight of a light naval cruiser. Power. That's what it's going to take to put men on the moon. Lots of power with the five first stage engines gulping a mixture of kerosene and oxygen at over 3,000 gallons per second. The manufacture and testing leading up to the first flyable Saturn V required numerous special test stands. Some designed, built, and tried out just to proof test the engines. Others tested full stages, stages with multiple engines clustered in their tails. Apollo Saturn is a complex effort, an effort nationwide in scope, at one time encompassing the talents of more than 400,000 people in government, industry, and universities. From many plants around the country, component parts like pieces of a giant jigsaw puzzle were funneled to the Kennedy Space Center to be fitted together. From NASA's Michoud Assembly Facility in New Orleans came the Boeing-built first stage, floated in by seagoing barge practically to the door of the 52-story vehicle assembly building. The second stage, built by the Space Division of North American Aviation in California, was shipped by a Panama Canal to the Mississippi Test Facility for checkout, then barged to Kennedy Space Center. McDonnell Douglas in California, builders of the lighter weight third stage, flew their hardware to Florida by strange-looking planes like these called Super Guppies. 
planes with five times the carrying capacity of most present jet transports. As they arrived, the various components were placed inside the vehicle assembly building. It is here that the so-called stacking takes place. Rocket stages placed one upon the other to form a single unit. This is the first stage. Its job will be to boost itself plus the rest of the rocket and Apollo spacecraft to a distance of 40 miles, reaching a speed of 6,000 miles per hour. This will also be the first use in space of the powerful second stage. Its five liquid hydrogen-fed engines will deliver one million pounds of thrust, taking over after the first stage burns out, propelling upwards to 108 miles and more than doubling the speed. The third stage, capable of firing, shutting down, then reigniting. It is the third stage that will orbit the payload, and after starting the engine again, put the spacecraft into deep space. An IBM instrument unit serves as the eyes and ears of Apollo Saturn. It houses the rocket's guidance and control systems and is mounted on the third stage. Stacked three high on top of this is the command module or crew quarters, the service module with its primary propulsion engine, and the lunar module section, housing for the craft that will someday land on the moon. At the very top, the launch escape system used in case of an emergency. Previously, space vehicle stages were transported to the pad, then assembled and tested there while awaiting launch. Saturn V has changed all this. The new method is known as the mobile launch concept. Again, Dr. Werner von Braun. We had to develop uh, the facilities from which uh, the rocket was to be launched. Now this latter job was done by the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. And, uh, the Saturn V launch facility, for instance, features what is believed to be the largest uh, building in the world as far as volumetric content is concerned. It is big enough to assemble four of these uh, Saturn V Apollo vehicles simultaneously in vertical position and then move them out from this uh, vertical assembly building to the launch pad three and a half miles away. Uh, this moving is done uh, by a uh, caterpillar tractor. It's a, a track laying vehicle powered by a 5,000 horsepower diesel engine and uh, electric motors driving the actual tracks. Uh, this vehicle moves under the um, launch platform on which the vehicle is initially assembled and just uh, jacks it up and carries it piggyback to the launch pad. The launch pad itself is also quite a complex facility. It not only provides um, uh, much electrical uh, gear that uh, is required uh, near the launch uh, facility itself, but adjacent to the launch pad are also all the fuel and oxidizer tanks with which the vehicle is loaded prior to launch. Then, of course, uh, there are access arms to the various stages. There's even an access arm through which the astronaut, uh, astronauts board their spacecraft. At the end of this access arm is a uh, full-fledged clean room to make sure that no dirt is carried into the spacecraft. So all this together is a very uh, complex operation.